July the 30th, 2020. Guys, we got some new information on the Tropical Storm Isaiah. And uh, just, uh, I'm not going to talk about it now, but we do have a 50% chance over a five-day period of this system that's moved off of Africa right there. Again, 50% chance of development. But it's got a long way to go, and it's going to be wrapped up in some of the Saharan dust, so we'll just have to keep an eye on it. But Isaiah, is, again, it's still at 60 miles an hour. This was uh, updated uh, at 4.55 p.m. Eastern. Central pressure is 999 millibars. It is moving northwest at 17 knots or 20 miles per hour. It's interesting because the or most all but the Canadian track or spaghetti model has it moving off the east coast, just off the east coast of Florida and headed up towards the Carolinas and becoming a hurricane. And it's going to become a hurricane actually before it gets to Florida because it just skated uh, one section of the storm over uh, the Dominican Republic right there. It kept a large portion, especially the northeast quadrant, the strongest part, offshore. So it's changed. Let's take a look at that. Now this is the uh, 5 p.m. update from Fox down in Florida, guys. And it's showing, again, you can see where the storm is now and it kept that one side one leg in the water the entire time so it didn't fully push across all the mountains and that made a difference now by two o'clock in the morning 65 mile per hour friday at 2 p.m in the afternoon tomorrow 70 mile an hour right here now it's still getting it's in the uh, bahamas it, and uh, it's now a cat one hurricane and it's showing it holding that speed as it skims the coast of East Florida and centers out along the uh, Carolina border. You can't see it here. And then uh, it, you can see how it catches Nag's head, comes through there, and uh, moves back out to sea. But it's going to get uh, a swath of the East Coast. We'll look at one other chart. But again, 60 miles an hour northwest at 20 miles an hour. It's moving fast. And if you look at the timing again, when it would be the closest to Florida. Now, the one model, the Canadian model, still has it coming ashore. That's why this area where the center uh, is marked in yellow, where the center can move from either left or right. That, so they've averaged the models to this uh, white line you see there. But it's uh, Saturday at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. You've got a Cat 1 hurricane setting off the east coast here, and that's going to continue and most of Florida is going to feel it because the storm is larger than this tracking model. If we look at those models again, you've got the TABS, and these are run on different uh, inputs. One, would, this would obviously be the high-pressure area moving across the southeast United States and into the Gulf. But here, the Canadian model has it skimming across Miami and coming up uh, south of Tampa, moving in, coming back ashore at the uh, South Carolina, North Carolina border. And your Navy model in the purple line is very much in track with what the National Hurricane Center average was in the model we just showed. And here we have uh, it skimming across the outer banks of North Carolina and headed back out into the Atlantic. Again, um, this will change somewhat because this high-pressure system changes each day and it's hard to predict exactly where the opening will be but as we get closer things are going to be tightening up but don't forget the canadian model is highly accurate so just everybody in florida keep your eyes on the storm now this is looking at the wide atlantic satellite image you can see a tropical storm here and you can see this one that's just off the african coast here might want to keep our eyes on this system, but right there you're starting to get somewhat of a rotation. That's why it's got a 50% chance of development. But it's got to mingle with a lot of this Saharan dust. Check it out right above it right there. This storm, guys, it's starting to match the Navy model that we've seen a few different times. This morning, for example, where it showed if it missed, and we talked about it, if it did not make an impact directly into South Florida, if it stayed offshore, and got into that warm Gulf Stream that we more than likely would have a hurricane, and that's why the Navy model was showing the low-pressure colors going from blue to purple. 
but uh, the storm's wrapping up again you can see it's almost the entire center now is back offshore let's take a closer look at the caribbean satellite and here you can see very clearly the entire center of circulation now is almost offshore but it's a wide storm remember that as it's you think about this skating close to the florida shore on the east side that it's much larger than what the cone or the path indicates that's just the center of it so you could uh you're going to have some wind and rain regardless of where this thing goes but it's cranked up guys again the center circulation is back offshore and that's why they're going to move it to a hurricane and it's actually forming a hurricane in the bahamas the navy model had it forming uh as a very strong system as it moved along the east coast getting close to georgia and florida line there so let's watch for a cat two possibly out of this because it they were already predicting it according to the navy model at least a cat one now that that's changed and it's going to be a hurricane in the bahamas it's going to have plenty of time to strengthen but guys we're watching this you watch it uh, updates will be put up it's a heads up be safe